Mm-hmm. Hey, welcome back. Um, okay, so <clears throat> um, just sharing the notes. So the thing is, uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of negativity, okay? <laughs> As you may have realized in the first class, a lot of things like, uh, a lot of wrong things that are happening, a lot of negative things. So while we, are, while we are looking at it, we are looking at it with hope that they can change. Hope, I, I, uh, I think it's something stronger than hope, with the, you know, with the surety that these things can change because of the power of the Holy Spirit and because of the Word of God, what we intentionally do with the truth of God's Word. Okay, so don't be overwhelmed because we are looking at problem after problem after problem. We're describing the problem. We're describing the scenario. Okay, this is what a human being goes through and all that. And sometimes you might be able to relate to it. Maybe you, know, you see it and you know, you've seen it in other people's lives and so on. So. So just a disclaimer, while we look at the negative side of things, it is to actually derive the solution and to come and, and to really you know, look at the truth that yes, there is healing uh, because of you know, the power of the cross, because of the shed blood of Christ, because of the empowering work of the Holy Spirit and so on. Okay, so with that chapter two, what are the causes of problems, <laughs> right? Okay. Problems in the soul. Okay. Firstly, we see that it's because of wrong thinking, wrong mindsets, and wrong believing. Okay. So we, our beliefs, actually, our belief, our perspectives on life have a whole lot to do with the way we live our life, right? Uh, and if we sincerely believe something, and if we are sincerely wrong about it, it doesn't matter. The way we live our lives changes because of the way we believe, right? So it's important, you know, uh, if we have if you have wrong thinking, um, you know, it, it happens like you know people uh, who do not know the Lord. For them, truth is relative, and truth is what you define it to be the truth, or values are what you define to be right and wrong. So. You know, in, in that kind of a scenario, people say that hey, there's nothing called right or wrong. Right? There's nothing called right or wrong. And uh, But when you look at the problems, you realize that, hey, there is something called wrong. There is something called right. And the wrong things relate and is resulting in damage, is resulting in confusion, is resulting in destruction. Obviously, there is the reference point of right and wrong, right? Um, so when we look at wrong thinking or wrong mindset patterns of thinking, right, it results in some problems. Okay, so what are those things, right? Um, it can let's let's say a wrong thought. Wrong thought could be simple example could be that the picture that we have of God Himself, right? When we have a thought that God is angry all the time. God is angry all the time. God is just waiting to punish me. Okay, so now that's the thought. That's the overriding thought that we have as, let's say, as a believer. Now, how will our life be? Right? I don't want to, you know, I don't want to interact with an angry person. I don't want to interact with a person who's dangerous, who could cause danger to me. Right? So my my, my mind tells me that as far as possible, Avoid this person. As far as possible, don't go near this person. Right? God is angry. God is waiting to punish. He is waiting to find some problem, some reason, so that he can trip me up or destroy my life. Right? So how will our life be? Church, avoid minimal interaction with God. Minimal. Right? Unless absolutely necessary, don't go to God. Right? You try avoiding at all. So that is a thinking pattern. That's a mindset. So that's an extreme example, right? But we could have examples like 
God does not want me to have fun. God does not want me to enjoy life. Right? Or sometimes, you know, we've had that, no? Like people saying, you know, I, I very recently also I spoke to someone who's saying, you know, when I when I'm laughing and having a good time, when I'm when I'm enjoying being with friends, and suddenly there's this thought comes that something bad is going to happen. Okay. And then she says that this is what has happened. Something bad happens all the time. Whenever I have fun, whenever I'm having a good time. Therefore, I've decided that I'm not I'm not going to be giving myself over to laughing or this thing. So this is a young person, very sad, saying that, saying that, that uh, I just want to be, I'll be serious. So she catches herself when she's having a nice time or she's laughing and saying, okay, okay, now I need to correct. I need to change. Something bad will happen. So then, you know, she's talking to her and saying, you know, see, this is what you're declaring over your life. So something bad will happen. This is what you're declaring. Maybe there was a couple of, incidents that happened in the past but this is what you're declaring and it's becoming a you know your self-fulfilling prophecy you're looking forward to it you're expecting something bad to happen and you're declaring something bad to happen and your whole life is changing according to your mindset and what you're believing so 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 a wrong mindset right it can really hamper our life restrict our life and that is why the lord says that you know the holy spirit has come to lead you into all truth and this truth is liberating. Truth liberates. Right? It's not. It's not to put us in prison. It's not to put us in chains, but actually to truly liberate us. Right? Bring us into freedom. Okay. So, um, so when you look at the um, let's say the some of the strategies of Satan. Right? Is one thing is Satan. Uh, if a person believes that there is no devil. That is a strategy by itself. There's no devil. There's no devil. There's no Satan. So, you know, so that's it. When you when you when you're so convinced that there is no devil, then you're opening your door out for anything that the enemy can come and do. Right? You're not going to distinguish, oh, is it of the enemy or is it you no? Know, when you say, Oh, there's no devil. Right? The other thing is the titles of Satan, when you look at it, Satan is called the father of lies he's the liar so from his resources there are lies so you give in to the lies then your thinking becomes a lie okay. he's called the deceiver which means that he brings deception okay, what is deception um making you to believe what is false by a trickery, right? But the thing is, when it comes to self-deception, right, it's very difficult to, because you believe something, sincerely believe something, to be uh, to be the truth. And we are deceived. Okay? Um, and uh, I, I remember watching a small clip and it's uh, of a movie, and uh, it's like, this person in the movie believes that, okay, uh, this person actually, um, I think he is brought in a very uh, artificial set setting. Okay, his whole life from baby to adult, I think it's called the Truman Show. I'm not, I'm, he's, from baby to life, uh, baby to adult, he's grown in a set. Okay, and it becomes the best TV show because 24 hours, um, they're just focusing on this baby. Right, so it's an artificial thing. So babies in this environment, well, let's say in the Bible college alone. So everything revolves around the Bible college for the baby. Baby is growing up, finding out this thing, and then so so the the rating of that TV show goes up because you know they want to see what is happening to the baby. So the whole world for the baby, for the child as it grows up, becomes a teenager. Is so is this doesn't know anything outside. Okay, whereas there is an audience who are actually watching. So they control the weather, they make the sunshine, sunrise, sunset. Everything is artificially done. And in between, there are these actors who will come and promote their products. Like the child is, you know, let's say the baby is eating a, the child is eating a dosa, you know, a breakfast. 
then suddenly somebody will come you know go to adiyar anand bhavan and eat those you know they are selling their <laughs> product and they're looking at the camera but the child everywhere there are cameras the child doesn't know okay so the child is deceived into thinking that this is what the world is and that and the and when when he becomes an adult he's warned he don't cross this river okay there's an artificial river in the set don't cross the river because it reaches the end of the world and you fall down so the the right from the childhood to also when he grows into adult so this tv program you know spans across some 30 40 years becomes the best uh, you know tv show and everybody is watching it in the world and and then he he doesn't want to cross the river because he's so fearful that if he crosses he'll fall away but then he realizes something is wrong okay, somewhere something is wrong because one day one one light bulb falls from the sky okay suddenly from the sky because the whole thing is a set right so the whole sky and everything is a set so so he realizes you know why is it why is the bulb falling from the sky blue sky suddenly bulb is falling so you know something is wrong and he, like that he finds out small things and then he says you know i want to i want to go in this boat and i want to go in this river go cross this river and i want to go elsewhere i had enough of this place but all the time there is that fear what if i fall down okay he's got to be deceived and then he just keeps going and he says no i will go and then the, they create a storm right they create a storm and they try to capsize the boat so that he'll come back to the shore and not you know cross the thing but he just keeps going he said no it doesn't matter i'm going if even if i lose my life i i want to go i want to see what is there and then he crosses and then the it hits the you know what he thinks is the end of the you know further sky and so on it hits a set like it's it's actually a you know set that is painted so he hits that and then he sees a door that is there and he opens the door and he steps out into the world outside right he realizes that the whole thing is a set but i mean there's an important lesson in the sense right from childhood till he becomes an adult he is in that set and he thinks that he's completely deceived into thinking that this is life right so self deception self deception all that to say that self deception can be so powerful because if the deceiver can deceive us into planting that lie as a thought in our minds it can be something about god uh something that is you know totally contrary to the truth of what god is who god is like it can be something or it can be something about ourselves believing about ourselves believing about the other person so we can be completely blind to the truth and if our wrong thinking is not addressed it will result in our life being our actions our decisions everything will be in in line with that thinking right so that's why you know it's very important for us to expose ourselves or present ourselves like romans 6 uh, talks about i think present present ourselves to god right let's look at that verse um um yeah yeah romans chapter 6 right so he says um and do not present your members to instruments of righteous unrighteousness sin but present yourselves to god as being alive from the dead verse 13 and your members as instruments of righteousness to god okay so as long as we keep presenting ourselves you know to god and opening up our lives to him and then it says that you know you do that and then verse 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under law but under grace okay so present yourselves as instruments of uh, righteousness i remember as instruments of righteousness present yourself to god as being alive from the dead okay so um so these are things something that we need so but the, but the wrong thinking or wrong mindset wrong thought pattern can really cause a lot of problems uh, in our lives right and it originates in our soul in our minds right 
secondly wrong speaking and wrong words that have been spoken over us okay you know whether you like it or not we actually speak to ourselves right it could be verbally we speak and say okay this is who i am or it could be a choice that you you know you speak to yourself in your mind right you speak to yourself you get up in the morning and something happens and either you're telling yourself you know i'm i'm worthless uh, or you're telling yourself something you're according you know, or you're agreeing to the truth or disagreeing with the truth right and we do it subconsciously which means it's not a conscious thought it's not a intentional decision but it just happens right we 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 just make a decision okay this is who i am this is what i am you know or you call yourself names you put labels we put labels on ourselves okay so these labels could be uh, some some things could be good some things could be bad some things could be the truth and some things could be far away from the truth we put labels okay so the words that we speak over ourselves our, ourselves okay what about the words that others speak right um i remember once uh, i think it was in school yeah this uh, this teacher wanted to speak to me when she was at a distance and uh, she sent someone and uh, uh, and then she said okay go call call this call me come call jake so i was standing there she was seeing she was watching from the distance but um, i didn't know that she was watching okay so she sent this person call him so this guy called came and said hey, this teacher is calling you so immediately i was like oh really oh, okay uh, oh but then what did i do wrong you know i'm i'm telling him what did i do wrong i i didn't do anything wrong oh, i don't want to come now and i'm telling him all that and then this teacher finally she's watching there and then she's this guy said pointed to her and said she's there only i i looked at that i looked at her, oh god i was like because i was telling this guy you know i didn't do anything wrong why why is she calling me well, for what do you, you know and i'm i'm just going over things did i do anything wrong and then i i went to her and then she said she said come here you useless fellow and, you know and then that word stuck in my mind i was like useless fellow and i was like uh, for a long time you know i couldn't come out of that right um useless fellow and and the words that people speak over us it can be in settings like that so this is in school i don't even remember what standard i was you know but i do remember it was a sports day people were there there on the ground and i was and it's very clear i remember where i re- i forget who called me but i remember the teacher's name <laughs> i remember the teacher and i remember this incident why because for a long time it troubled me right the words that she spoke over me okay so it can be very powerful it can be like like gum it will just stick right so for a long time it bothered me till i had to come to that truth of who i am in christ and then say okay right i remember the incident but the the pain of it is gone right so you can't forget the incident it will still be there your soul is powerful right you remember it but the pain of such the memory is there but the pain is not there because you have healed from that um, memory right now this is just a simple thing but then it could be how about traumatic things right how about things that are even more painful maybe shameful where we live under condemnation outside we are smiling beaming saying wow good but inside there are things that you can't talk about because of the shame that we have undergone because of the pain that we have undergone and we don't want to expose ourselves to other persons you know or share that with other people because it's still you know there's that pain and everything that has got a grip on us right so uh, which brings us to the next thing right so we were talking about words that people speak so what about deep seated continual sin okay deep seated ingrained maybe some addictive things and it's it's been a part of your life for years and years and years and years right so those kind of things also we know that that 
opens the door for uh, satanic influence, demonic influence, and so on, right? Deep seated, right? And painful, traumatic um, uh, instances, right? Maybe there is strife, maybe there is family, in family, there are certain things that happen, like uh, maybe the father says, I disown you, or the mother says, I disown you. You know, there, there are things that hurt us very deeply because you know we care for them and then they say something and it's still there okay um and that also affects our lives right okay um the other things could be our involvement in maybe occult and false religions okay um so this this becomes a problem because being involved in the occult or be, being uh, involved in so what what is occult you say it's uh, something to do with uh, the powers of darkness, any ritual, uh, any dedication. And sometimes it starts out as a harmless thing, like fun, uh, you know, maybe in college, they're calling on, you know, this that board, the Ouija board, and they're calling on the evil spirits or doing something. You know, it's it just starts out as fun and harmless thing. But it could, you know, very, very quickly lead to... Uh, you know, opening certain doors, right? So, if we are involved in that um, and deep-seated things, right? Maybe somebody's, you know, says, "Okay, you carry this. This is blessed. You know, this is. It was in such and such a temple or such and such a place of worship. Uh, you know, it was blessed and this thing. And then, you know, that could even open the door for some kind of, uh, uh, you know, o o open the door for op oppression and influence, right? And uh, it. It keeps us in that place of addictive, you know. We're talking about as believers, right? So while we have the authority to reject it, what if we have not? Right? We have the authority to reject, we have the authority to shut down or, or close off that influence. We have the authority. But if we have accepted, if we have received, then there is always a doorway for oppression, right? Uh, like I don't know this person who actually went to this particular place of worship. And uh, came back heavily oppressed. Okay, now he had other problems, like he had a drinking problem. Like he was a heavy um, addicted to drinking. But then a believer. I'm talking about a believer. Believer addicted to drinking. And he went to this other place of worship, and he went around it once. Okay, he went around the walls of it once. Came back heavily oppressed. By the enemy, there's a mark change in behavior, mark change in the same. So we had to go and pray and uh, you know deliver and also warn him about the other thing that the addiction that was opening the door for the influence of the enemy, right? So it was both ways. You know, this addiction was opening at the same time. This it was also energizing this addiction, right? So uh, so th so these are kind of things that actually. Um, you know, influence us in the soul realm, in our emotions. So, uh, so we need to be careful. We need to use our authority. We need to, um, you know, let go of these things, or you know, even cleanse, do a kind of cleansing, um, and so on, and check, reflect, and see. Okay, okay. Ancestral commitments, practices. Right. We know that uh, we, uh, if there has been some dedication, some rituals, and everything, um, you know, some that are passed on. Right, so we uh, we refute it, we uh, curses, uh, etc., evil spirits, and so on. So we 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 don't give in, right? We don't give in. If if you know that there is intimidation or uh, you know an influence which comes in the form of intimidation, fear, then we can we, we we can rise up. Most times, as believers, we rise up and we say, okay, no, you know, this is it. I will use my authority. But if it comes as something as innocent, something as um, as a seductive thing, you know, then we we fall. Right? We don't realize it. So that is why we need the discernment. And when the Holy Spirit speaks and tells us, we we immediately obey. Right? Um, yeah. And so you know these kind of things, very very uh, you know intense emotions. Or even these uh, emotions of self-hatred, low self-esteem, and so on. We need to check ourselves. Right? We need to check and see. You know, this is not 
from God. Right? Many times we stay in that place, right? Uh, because it's not harming anybody. You're just in a bad mood and you say, okay, for two days, you know, like that. You know, But the thing is, why, why stay in that place? Right? Why should you? Why should we entertain those thoughts? Why should we entertain, you know? Maybe it could be thoughts of self-harm. Maybe it can be thoughts of... And it feels good at that moment because it feels like, okay, um, you know, uh, I'm doing something to even get rid of that pain, right? Self-harm or escaping from reality, right? Doing certain things to escape from reality and so on. So um, just come back quickly to the truth. You know, yes, it's possible that there are suggestions like that. You know, we even feel that, okay, we, we are being even led to do certain things, but, you know, discern, check yourself, check ourselves, and, and immediately let go of any of these things which are uh, which are leading us away, all right? Okay. Um, we just, uh, you know, this, this uh, I, I just lead, lead, uh, leave you to read through, you know, difference between possession and oppression. Um, I think you would have learned that in uh, the authority of the believer, right? Authority of the believer and also um, healing and deliverance course, you would have gone through it. So uh, I'm not going to go through that again, but just mention that, that um, when we say a person is demonized, the Bible does not talk about possession, uh, you know, it does not use that word. Right? Just use the word a person is demonized. So it can be. Um, so when the, that raises the question, you know, like can a believer be possessed? Right? When you use that word possessed, you're saying losing all control. Right? The fact is that a person can be demonized to a certain degree to the to the extent that they open their lives to the work of the enemy. Right? They can be demonized where the enemy oppresses them in their thoughts. In their actions and so on. Okay, so I'll just leave it at that, and uh, we can go through that section. Okay. Okay. So let's just look at um, you know some symptoms of um, demonic activity. You know, because of these open doors. Okay, it can be oppression, and overpowering, intimidating, overbearing, right? oppression. Right? These intense, heavy very compulsive things to do the wrong thing, right? So it's a demonic oppression. It doesn't mean that the demon, demon is resident and taken control of, of, the, of the person, but it just means that the demon is influencing, the power of darkness is in influencing and oppressing. Okay, so if that symptom is there, then we very quickly know that, okay, if the symptom is there, then which means that uh, we know who's behind that symptom, and when you know who's behind that symptom, we reject. Okay, so we don't have to entertain. We don't have to entertain. We don't have to stay in that place of oppression. We don't have to stay in that place of that heavy and dark influence. We don't have to be there. Right? Okay. So you make a choice. You make a decision. You say, you know, I'm not going to. I reject this. I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to continue in that. Right. So many times we we continue there. You know, we continue on that. We choose to stay in that place. Reject it. Okay. What about torment? Continual torment. Tormenting thoughts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Harmful, troubling, intensely troubling. You know, over and over again. I'm being troubled by these thoughts. Okay. So many times we think, okay, that, that's me. That's just me. You know, I'm like that. These thoughts come. This is how I am. But we need to make a difference and say, okay, will God do it? Does God want me to? The God who says that, you know, he wants to preserve my spirit, soul, and body blame, blameless till the coming of Christ. Right? Does he want me to? You know, entertain this kind of torment and and cause so much of damage to my you know to my life, or do I put an end to it? Do I rise up, take authority, and do I put an end to it? Right, uh, and so on. Right, 
so um so so the thing is to avoid close the door on such influences okay um any questions um any thoughts any questions pastor this uh, like when we are seeing this symptoms of demonic activities like this oppression and uh, torment under this can the thoughts of like is can it uh, like uh, how to put it like the thoughts of like uh, tormenting and oppression can also be uh, we are recollecting back of the things that we do oh, wrong yes. yeah and uh, dwelling like coming back and forth again and again disturbing us can that also come under this tormenting oppression will it also come under it yeah so oppressive is so what does oppressive mean oppressive is heavy uh weighty and pushing down you know when you look at oppression it means that you put a weight so as to restrict you from doing the things that you you know you would normally do It's just restriction so this whole thing comes and you're not able to do what you want to do tormenting is repetitive troubling over and over again where you're not free enough to do other things you know you're just uh, again you hold back from doing what you need to do yeah so so the, these are things and so uh, it is it becomes very compulsive and then so can the enemy do it yes can the enemy uh, mm. yeah so it it is right Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, so you're, you're saying, what is the source? Is the source of this torment? Is it me, or is it the, is it the devil? Okay, okay. One answer is it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. It has to be dealt with. Uh, but having said that yes you know if it is if it is you it could be a stronghold in 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 my own mind you know that has not been again dealt with you know it's it's uh, my mind is not renewed to it uh, if it is the enemy the enemy again knows that my mind is not renewed and therefore i'm accepting these kind of thoughts and imaginations and i'm dwelling on it but the enemy comes and because i'm accepting these things you know i'm giving legal ground for the enemy to just influence and you know so uh, it, but in both the cases um it is you know it, it, it's causing it's restricting me from being a believer to to live life the way god the lord would want me to live so in which case the moment i discern this is not from the lord see many times what we do is we we are love because we think it is conviction right we are love so let's say you've done something in the past right we've done some you know, it was a mistake and uh, or maybe you did it willingly whatever you knowing that it's, it's wrong you did it okay so many times we are love this kind of torment and oppression because we think it is conviction of the holy spirit god is convicting me God is telling me it is wrong. It's not conviction. Conviction is when Holy Spirit convicts us that something is wrong. Yeah, there is pain, but He is providing an open door. He's saying, "Okay, see, what you've done is wrong. It, whether intentionally, knowingly, unknowingly, what you've done is wrong. But hey, this is the way out. Holy Spirit always leads us. This is the truth. This is where freedom is. This is where restoration is. That's our God, right? Redeemer, Restorer. So He's, he's He points to that." but this torment is there's no way out 
it's like locking the door throwing away the key you're in a prison you have to stay there over and over again you're just going over that there's no solution now when we when we know that okay this is how it is it's not helping me i need to stay out i need to come out of it the minute you make we make that choice and say lord you know this is what you, and we remind us if this is what your word says this is what you know you you uh, said about yourself and about me the minute you start speaking it declaring it and agreeing with the truth then you realize that you know you rise up in authority uh, you rise up and you take the you know you take that first step towards freedom yeah so that's the that's the thing yeah it's not from god it's not from god because um, see it's already under the blood if you've gone and you asked for repentance asked for forgiveness sorry and said lord i repent and you asked for forgiveness well what does the scripture say 1 john 1:9 says that he is faithful he is faithful to forgive so that is what it and how do you receive that faithfulness i mean how do you receive that forgiveness by faith faith belief in what he has stated there so i receive it and i might feel or i might not feel you know depending on how strong are this thing is that uh, i might feel the emotion but i may not feel the emotion but i receive it by faith and if there is a suggestion again hey you did this i go back to that place which place not the place of doing the wrong thing but the place of asking for forgiveness and repentance and saying i asked and the lord is faithful so i now let go you know it's under the it's covered by the blood i can't nothing good comes from going back feeling that pain hitting myself over and over again nothing good comes from that and that's not uh, the way of the holy spirit that's not the work of god yeah what is controlling um yeah controlling again control uh, like um, being compulsive uh yeah overbearing and you're asking about um, the work of the enemy in controlling yeah yeah so oh okay okay symptoms when we're talking about symptoms yeah so symptoms is that being overbearing and uh, controlling and being manipulative so it talks about uh, scripture talks about how um, manipulation is uh, a rebellion is witchcraft you know as as witchcraft and um, and the fruit of that is also you know manipulation and trying to control um, because if you see um, see the the fruit of the holy spirit is um, um you know what we see love joy peace and everything uh, self governing behavior and so on so the lord always honors the free will of the person right so he's never he always gives a choice and says okay okay this is good this is bad he always gives a choice but then when it's um, when we are when we are compelled to control you know not give the choice for that person and always want so then that also becomes a yeah, a symptom of demon, demonic influence yeah um and it can be for ourselves also right where it's an overpowering thing where we are maybe sense that okay um uh it's an over overriding thing you know i have to do this like against our better judgment like i remember like uh, my cousin saying that whenever we he, he was saying like he was very open and he says you know whenever i go to a tall building or on top of this mount i i, I hear this voice saying take take a leap right he's saying so he was like almost uh, you know and he's saying it's a very overpowering thing i feel that i have to you know uh, obey so it's if it's if there's any compulsive overbearing kind of a desire um then we know that that's a, a symptom of uh, demonic activity trying to just completely take over our emotions and 
and uh, yeah also a fruit of that is that you know it can work both ways is what i'm saying you know controlling over ourselves and also this overpowering desire to restrict the choice of another person control the person um it could be could be a symptom i'm not saying that you know because it could be personality personality trait also right a person can be like oh, i want it like this my book should be here my you know i want it. if you move it i'm getting upset uh, you know it could be that just a personality trait also so see all these things that we are seeing uh, saying it it could be a stronghold in our mind right a, a stronghold in our mind but at the same time you know when these things continue over a period of time it can be energized by demonic activity so that's the possibility right so any deep seated continual thing opens the doorway for the enemy to come and energize i think that's the yeah yeah Oh, just passing on the mics. Okay, okay. So we let's. Uh, I think we'll stop here. Um, we have about ten minutes, but we'll. Yeah, we can. I think. I guess we'll stop. Yeah, you have a question. I said. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Like, uh, we're talking about this whole thing of inner wholeness, right? So, so uh, this um, soul ties or attachments with. Uh, people uh, emotional attachment or you know like sometimes you just admire some people who yeah. are not even more in your life or someone who was gone dead and gone mm. so we are having these attachments with those people and uh, soul ties with people in our past can also affect us uh, not being whole like yeah in what way is it affecting you know okay let's say you used to held somebody in very high esteem and respect and all that and that person is not there in your life in the sense physically or not there in the environment and uh, so that is affecting you negatively is it is what is that is that what you're saying is mm. mm. Yeah. 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 So, so the thing is, see. Um, yeah. How do we say that? Yeah. It, it, it is. It. It is true that we can be involved in other people's lives, um, and then they are not there anymore, and uh, you know that it's so deeply ingrained in our mind, in our psyche, that we uh, think. But then. So if it is a you know if it's something to do with bereavement, if something person is not there physically, then a human being goes through the process of grieving and dealing with the pain of missing that person, which is normal. And uh, it can, you know, it, uh, we know that it can be over a period of time. Let's say it could be a year, it could be even more. And sometimes people are stuck. You know, they're unable to come out. Uh, we, they need help encouragement uh, to consider uh, you know consider the uh, and to let go you know, and it takes some time so that is um, that is normal but if uh, again you know if it it goes beyond a certain period of time and they're unable to uh, let go uh, even after considering you know okay um, that I'm, I'm talking about death and bereavement even after considering uh, the reality of heaven and, and so on and the Holy Spirit being the comforter and so on um, yeah then yeah, then there is a you know there is an issue there is a challenge um, and the person really needs to work on it intentionally it's, it's not like the okay, okay nothing cannot be done but slowly and also you know gently that person needs that help and the guidance to, to let go to to come out of it maybe the person has been trying on their own but um, they can with the help of you know others to let go and uh, come out of it um 
yeah so that's uh, the thing and also you know sometimes uh, also infidelity you know like multiple relationships that also causes a person to be attached uh, to that to, no, to another person and uh, maybe that person has moved on and then you know you need to let so 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 all that is in the realm of the soul and also like you mentioned it's a cause for or a reason for emotional wholeness you know, uh, a need for emotional wholeness to come about yeah yeah you want to ask something nina you were... no okay Okay, shall we stop here? And then we can... Um, yeah. So next we can go into... Next class we can look at um, the restoration part, right? What? So what is this? So we've kind of been looking at the problem. These are the problems. It's So just want to say that problem is real. It's not imagined. Problem can be empowered or energized by the demonic, again. So that's real but the solution is also real healing is also real like the healing is also complete and real and so we're going to look at what is the basis for that healing when you say okay a person can be made whole a person can be emotionally fine what is the basis of which what is the truth uh, based on which we are saying that and experiencing that right? okay okay we'll stop here Online folks, if you have any questions or anything to add, um, you can do that as well. Or we could stop here. Okay. Fine. Thank you. We'll uh, meet again next week for Inner Wholeness. God bless.